Gaming on Linux, a seemingly never-ending story of success, failure and a lot of odd choices. Since the release of the Steam Deck in early 2022, Gaming on Linux has never been as popular as now. And even though there are not that many Linux native games, compatibility layers like Wine, DXVK and resulting out of them also Valve's Proton have made it quite easy to run Windows games as well. Simply enable it in the Steam settings, download a game of your choice and click on play. Or at least that would be the case if there weren't some hiccups here and there. A lot has changed since my last video about gaming on Linux and I believe it's time that we talk about the things that improved, the things that broke and definitely what the future holds for the Linux desktop as a suitable gaming platform. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe by the way. Right, so every time I make a video like this, I seem to constantly repeat myself. But it's mainly due to the fact that gaming on Linux has just become really good. And I mean it. Back when I made my last video in April, even though a lot more games have been marked verified or playable, the amount of games that have been recommended by at least one up to three people hasn't really changed all that much. Let's also compare the top 1000 and we see that even though the amount of Borg games essentially stayed the same, the overall amount has become a lot more compatible. Most games achieve a gold rating, which basically means runs out of the box, but you might need to adjust your resolution, add a start command, etc. What's more interesting though is the increase of Platinum games, which basically means runs out of the box, without any tweaking whatsoever. That's really great news. However, if we take a look at what those Platinum games actually are, then it becomes apparent that it's mostly single player games. If we take a look at the most popular games by player count, then the story changes quite drastically. The overall rating shifts a lot and a lot of games are straight up borked. Why? Because of anti-cheat. And this is something that might become more of a problem in the future. EA introduced their new EA Anti-Cheat, which they currently already use in the new FIFA. And it just straight up makes the game not work on Linux, period. Like other solutions like Vanguard by Riot Games, their Anti-Cheat is also working on kernel level and has essentially access to all services that run on your PC. While they state, and I quote, if you have a process on your PC that is trying to interact with our game, EA Anti-Cheat could see that and respond. Everything else is off limits. However, if you want to be sure that no process whatsoever is interacting with your game, then you need to take a look from the other side as well, aka monitor all active processes. The problem that I have with this is not that it has access to your PC, since it's your choice to install it, but the thing is that I don't have the choice to install it on my PC because it doesn't work on Linux. Linux gamers could lose their EA Online games like Apex Legends for example if EA decides to swap the anti-cheat there as well. And that might actually be the case. Earlier this year, a lot of Linux gamers on the Steam Deck but also on the desktop have been banned from Apex Legends without any given reason. This is the second time already that this has happened and EA and Respawn only started to act once it's gone viral again. Working together with an external anti-cheat partner, in that case Easy Anti-Cheat, for a game that you don't even officially support on Linux takes time and effort. And it wouldn't surprise me if EA, not Respawn, just decide no, no more. No more external anti-cheats, only in-house solutions and only on the main gaming platform. And that would be a big problem. Companies do stuff like that all the time and just don't regard Linux whatsoever whenever they release a patch or an update. Ubisoft for example managed to break the launcher again and it has only been fixed recently. This means that if you own a Ubisoft game, and it doesn't even matter if on Steam or their own launcher, you just can't start it even though it would work perfectly fine. Like why? The funny thing is, I'm not even sure that they are doing this deliberately. See, they want to make their own launchers to get data from you or to make a switch to their own store way easier since you already get forced to familiarize. 
It also helps against piracy, since you have an extra layer of, well, nonsense really, but that's that. The thing is, if you want to use your own in-house solution for ads, a custom overlay or whatever else, if the game is already running fine, then you want to reach as many people as possible, right? Why break it? What I really hate about this is that there is basically coming no effort from them whatsoever and it's always on Valve or the open source community to fix it. Now okay, in some way this is beneficial since you integrate more features into Wine and Proton that makes it more compatible. But on the other hand you could also just make the program more compatible. Luckily it now works again, but for how long? Gaming on Linux can be a real mess sometimes. Launchers in general are something that should just be programmed for it. Forget about the game, okay? Let Proton or some other runtime handle that, okay? But making a launcher or store for Linux, if you really insist on them, is hacking easy in comparison to making the whole game compatible. Or even better, buy a Steam Deck or install one Linux distribution and just try to open it. One more test really couldn't hurt your development all that much. But yeah, back to talking about gaming on Linux in general. Those two things were the main problem that I've experienced over the past couple of months. And it's really sad to see, because the gaming experience on Linux is really not bad. I've been already playing Counter Strike 2, which runs natively to be fair, but I didn't experience any hiccups personally. Some did, but they were fixed quickly. Whenever I buy a new game, I don't even necessarily check if it is compatible with Linux. If it has online multiplayer, then I of course check either ProtonDB or Lutris, but otherwise you don't need to worry about it. It just has become that good. And to be fair, Windows has its fair share of problems as well. We also need to consider general PC problems, since a lot of Linux users are also tinkerers, which might break their system quite frequently. But that is not something that applies to most. The Steam Deck is an amazing example of that. And frankly, I don't think that gaming on Linux will just go away. Yes, Windows will stay on top for the near foreseeable future, since they already have the compatibility, the player base and also the money. Microsoft is really on a trip buying studios, publishers and everything in between, seemingly without even considering the price. And especially on the desktop, they will stay there for quite a while. The best chances that Linux currently has in the gaming market are handheld devices and consoles. Turning Windows into a console operating system is much harder and it usually adds stuff on top without removing all that much from the foundation. Storage wise it is a bit of a problem in comparison to Linux which with some tuning can be a quarter of Windows. And the awesome thing about Linux is that essentially anyone could install it on any device without any effort of porting games over. This of course goes hand in hand. More Linux gaming devices, more people might buy them and the more support from hardware vendors and companies we get. At the moment I see Linux as a suitable gaming platform for most and once I'm done playing Destiny 2 after the next DLC, if nothing weird happens, I will remove Windows from my PC once and for all, since I just don't need it for anything else. On the console market however, I see Linux already as the superior operating system since it can be used by everyone who wants it. It can be dialed in much better to the hardware if the developers put some effort in and it just generally is way easier to shape if you want a custom interface. You don't run something on top of an operating system, but within it. In conclusion, gaming on Linux is really great and is becoming better by the day. Since my last video there were a couple of hiccups with game launchers and the EA anti-cheat. But with the growing amount of people playing on Linux, maybe one day we can even convince the most hostile game publishers to let our games be played on any desktop operating system that we want. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like, subscribe to the channel and if you want to support it directly then please make sure to check out our new membership program in the description down below. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.